السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويلكم تو ايرا ايزي راديولوجي ابروتش اور توبيك توداي ويل بي ام ار اي اوف ذا ابيليبسي بارت 1 اي ام دكتور محمد طلعت ويز يو اسيستنت بروفيسور اوف راديولوجي كايرو يونيفرستي Uh, epilepsy has many causes. The main cause that we need to focus today is temporal loop epilepsy. We have other causes for epilepsy, and uh, I put this one or I put these causes under mnemonic vitamin C and D, D uh, V for vascular, I for infection, inflammation, T for trauma, A for autoimmune or acquired, metabolic, for M for metabolic. I for idiopathic or iatrogenic, N for neoplastic, C for congenital, D for drug induced. Uh, really, I am taking uh, this uh, mnemonic uh, in uh, many CNS uh, topics or uh, spine topics, uh, but uh, really uh, we will focus today in temporal loop epilepsy mainly. Temporal loop epilepsy, we have two types for temporal loop epilepsy, either mesial Temporal loop epilepsy, this one involves the medial structures of the temporal loop, and this accounts for almost 80% of all temporal loop seizures. However, we have another less common type, lateral temporal loop epilepsy. This one involves the outer part of the temporal loop. So we will focus today on the mesial temporal loop epilepsy. Regarding the imaging and technique that we are use for scanning in patient with epilepsy, in the emergency situation, we are using CT brain to exclude or to rule out any emergency situations. Otherwise, for diagnosis, we are using the MRI machine, MR machine to diagnose the epilepsy. We are using this one after a short period of time after the epileptic fit maybe two weeks, something, or three weeks at least. Uh, we are adding some specific techniques for our routine MRI brain. We are using coronal oblique T2 width imaging, two millimeter in thickness. We are using also coronal oblique flare image, two millimeter in thickness as well. We are using also axial or coronal T1 width image, one millimeter in thickness. This one is very, very important, especially in the pediatric age group searching for any cortical malformations. We are using also volumetric analysis. Some institutes are using this analysis to compare or to assess the volume of the timber loop. Regarding the coronal oblique T2 or flare image, we are going to have this coronal slices oblique for the timber loop. And this is the standard for imaging of the temporal loops. Regarding the anatomy, we will focus on the hippocampus. We will define where is the head, body, tail, fimbri, and fornix, amygdala, ancus, parahippocampal gyrus, fusiform gyrus, inferior, middle, and superior temporal gyri. Let us review in a brief, the proper anatomy for the temporal loop. We have here the head of the hippocampus. As you see here, the head of the hippocampus serrated in outline, undulated, interdigitating. As you see here, it is finger-like projection. This one is very, very characteristic for the hippocampal head. As you see also in this coronal image, we have different or many gyri that we need to know. We have here the parahippocampal gyrus, and we have here the fusiform gyrus, inferior temporal, middle temporal, superior temporal gyri. Those are the main gyri that is very important in case of epilepsy. We have also very important sulcus here. This one is called collateral sulcus, this one. This collateral sulcus is present, is located between the parahippocampal gyrus 
and the fusiform nerves. This is in brief the anatomy of the temporal lobe. Let us go or practice or implement this one to one of our cases. Let me, yeah. So if we need to start our anatomy, Yes, our anatomy will, will start by the hippocampal head. This one is the hippocampal head. As you see, the hippocampal head is serrated in outline. And this one is present in at the level of the mammillary body. Look for this one. This is a level of the mammillary body. And this one, the level of the hippocampal head. So if we go more posterior, so this is the level of the red nuclei of the midbrain. So this one is the hippocampal body, right side and left side. So at the level of the red nuclei, we are we can define the hippocampal body. If we go more posterior, at the level of the superior and inferior colliculi, we can define the hippocampal tail. So we have three levels of the hippocampus. At the level of the mammillary body, we have hippocampal head. At the level of the uh, red nuclei, we have the hippocampal body. At the level of the superior and inferior colliculi, we have the hippocampal tail. If we go more posterior, we have here the fimbria. And the fimbria, if we continue the fimbria anteriorly, we can see the fornix. The fornix is present inside the lateral ventricles on both sides, as you see here. So again, if we discuss in brief, this is the head of the hippocampus at the level of the mammary body. Then we go This is a level of red nuclei, so this one is a hippocampal body. This is a level of superior and inferior nuclei, so this is a hippocampal tail. And the fembry and phonics, as we discussed before. So let us go to the second important point here in the anatomy. Anteriorly, we have. We have here the amygdala, right and the left. This one's the most medial aspect of the temporal loop. And we have also here the ancus. The ancus is the medial border of the amygdala. So this is very important here to identify where is the ancus, where is the amygdala. If we need to identify the gyri, I think we can invert, you can invert the image. As you see here, it will be much more helpful helpful for you. This is T2 width image, but we invert the image. So this one here, we have the parahippocampal gyrus, the fusiform gyrus, inferior temporal gyrus, and we have here the middle temporal gyrus, superior temporal gyrus. So starting from medial, parahippocampal, 
then fusiform, inferior, middle, and superior temporal gyri. This is the most important anatomy, and we have here this small sul sulcus. This is the collateral sulcus, and as you see here, more or less horizontal in orientation, and it's parallel, more or less parallel to the temporal bone. We need also to add something very important that we don't have any volume loss. As you see here, between right and left, we don't have any volume loss. Even the temporal bone here and here, I think we can use different color. Here and here, I think it is almost the same. This is in brief what we have. And uh, thank you so much for attending this part. Let us move to our second part for giving us some examples in temporal loop epilepsy. Thank you so much.